Okay, so we are live. Hello, everyone. Listen, I am on just for a few minutes tonight. I actually wanted to um, get started with doing some pop-ups. And of course, I talked about having some scheduled ones as well. So you may or may not get this um, first live, but that's okay because it's basically a test session as well. Um, some of you all may get the notification later, or you might just pop in here and there and just see what you've missed. Um, either way, join me live or catch the replay. But um, so just welcome again to everyone who's purchased the um, ebook or the e-course. Um, I hope that you did both. If not, I want to encourage you to. I want to encourage you to. As you can see with the ebook, it was very concise um, and it was that was intentional. I didn't want to give too much information in the book because I know I was offering the courses. And so, of course, I want everyone to take part in the course. Hey, Elder, how are you? So glad you can join me tonight. Um, I was not going to be long. I just wanted to um, test the site and as well as just get these pop-up live Q&As going as well as um, just kind of get things going in the group. You know, uh, tomorrow will be a week that I launch the ebook and the e-courses. And so for some people who got the book because it was uh, very short, you probably already skimmed through it or read it and you know got the gist of it. And, um, and some of you may have purchased the courses as you did. And I thank God for you, Elder, you purchased the book and all four courses. And I know you work and I know you have a life. Um, so get through as quickly as you can or take your time. It doesn't matter. I'm just glad that you um, are part of this group and that you're going through this process. Even though I know you've been an elder for years, you're, you're um, seasoned, and um, I do appreciate your support. It does mean a lot. I, it, I don't take it for granted at all. And so, of course, it's good to have seasoned elders in this group as well because even though it, it kind of targets newly ordained elders or elders under study, or I shouldn't say elders under study, those who are under study to become elders, um, but then also some seasoned elders who we all have areas of opportunities, areas where we can improve and do better and um, sharpen our gifts and, you know, glean from one another, learn from one another. But I wanted to um, come on just for a few minutes. I've been gone today and I just got in and I do have some things I need to get um, taken care of tonight um, before I turn in. And so I, I just wanted to come on for just a few minutes and... Um, uh, someone sent me a message and I actually posted it today on my personal Facebook page, but also within the group. And um, I thought it was very interesting and um, I was glad that this person um, shared her thoughts um, on her um, experience when she's asked to speak. And so I'm just going to read it quickly and then I'm going to touch bases. I'm just going to give um, a few um, pointers, um, recommendations, suggestions, tips, um, advice, um, any term you want to use, um, basically to kind of share with her because and also with those who will be um, in this group, right? So she and she we have been communicating via messages but this one thing I, that stood out to me that i wanted to kind of touch bases on and um it says to me um, my hard part is when i'm asked uh, to speak when i'm called on to speak um like if i have to do the prayer on like a prayer call or she said i get so nervous when i have to do the call of worship i literally cry she said i always feel i'm not worthy to go into the pulpit nervous of messing up and then dealing with the church judgment i know i'm praying for deliverance and what people think so i mean i think she said a mouthful oh my god it was so much that she she said there um but there were there are some key things that i want us to kind of focus in on um i think all of us can acknowledge the fact that when we've been asked to do something for the very first time um it's not unusual for us to be nervous. Actually, nerves is a good thing because when you are nervous, you're, you're not placing any confidence in your flesh. In other words, you're saying, God, I need you. I cannot do this without you, right? And that is a good thing because some people, you know, 
think more highly of themselves than they ought to. Some people think that they can just do anything and everything without even praying about it. And I think it's so important that we don't take on that mindset. Um, because even though we may have knowledge, we may have experience, uh, we may have know-how, um, you still want to make sure that you rely on the Holy Ghost. And I think that is so very key. So um, it's okay to be nervous, but you cannot let your nerves uh, take full control. Um, and one of the ways you do that, uh, this was something that was shared with me many, many years ago by um, Bishop Morton's sister. Her name was um, Evangelist Nancy Maxwell. She was a powerhouse, powerful woman of God, a powerhouse. She was, um, every time she got in the pulpit, I mean, she, the, she just flowed up. I mean, effortlessly. I mean, she just, whatever she was asked to do, whether it was on the spot, uh, whether she was asking in advance. And one day I asked her, I said, how is it that you can just get up there and just flow? I mean, I may not have used the word flow at the time because that word may not have been popular back then. This was many, many years ago. And one of the things she told me she did was before, whenever she got an opportunity to um, flow in the pulpit, she always prayed in the Holy Ghost because that's where our help comes from, right? And so I think that's so key before you do anything, whether it's on a prayer line, whether you're in, flowing in a worship experience, whether you're teaching a, a class, whatever it is, you should always pray. The Bible says, build yourself up in, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So I think that's um, a, one key takeaway to, um, that we all can leave with tonight. Um, but the other thing, I, I don't want to go um, into too much here, but um, one of the things she said was, I always feel I'm not worthy to go into the pulpit. Now, we know the pulpit, it is sacred, right? And, you know, some of us who are old school, we don't like the kids playing in the pulpit. Um, some people say, you know, it's too deep, it's too serious, it's not all that, you know. Um, but whatever stance you take with that, um, the pulpit is a sacred platform. And uh, we should be mindful how we mount the pulpit and what we allow in the pulpit. Um, something is, is sacred, and we should honor the place where we stand and, and represent God and speak on behalf of God or do something in the kingdom of God that should be bringing glory to God, right? And so, um, but one of the things um, you know, um, I want that sister to know, as well as anybody in this group, he might feel like that they're not worthy to even mount the pulpit. I want you to know this. Um, the Bible reminds us that even though um, our sins are as filthy rags and that the Bible talks about how there's none righteous, no, not one. Of course, that scripture was in the Old uh, Testament and since then Jesus came and everything that we have done, past, present, and future has been covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we operate under what is called justification. It's just as if we never did it, right? So when we confess our sins, uh, we, we acknowledge um, and accept what we have done. We come in agreement with God that what we did was wrong. And we pray and ask for forgiveness and we repent. Um, we will make a vow not to try to do that thing again. It's covered by the blood of Jesus. So our worthiness is not based upon who we are or what we've done. Our worthiness is based upon who Christ is and what he's done, right? So the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not out of the flesh, but who walk out of the spirit. So um, even if your mind condemns you, God doesn't condemn you. And so um, even though we, want, we don't want to get caught up in our flesh, but we want to know that because of what Christ did, right? He has given us access <laughs> to operate in the things of God, right? To represent him in the kingdom of God in whatever capacity we're flowing. So you have a right to flow in the pulpit when you come with a right heart, with a right spirit, when you have a repentive spirit. So keep that in mind. And then nervous because you're concerned about messing up. Um, we're, we're human, we're going to mess up. It's okay to mess up if you know how to recover well, right? You know, I talk about that in the e-course. I'm not going to give all of that away because guess what? I want you to take the course, right? Um, but if you can mess up as long as you know how to recover, and we, I, 
we go through that um, during the course. But there's a way, um, certain things you don't want to say and do when you mess up in the pulpit, right? And we talk about that in the course. It's course number two. So be sure to um, sign up for that course and take it and you get so, so much more information there. And then she talks about, you know, having to deal with church judgment because people are people. You know, somebody's going to have something to say, whether they say it to you directly or not. Nine times out of ten, they won't say it to you directly, right? They might think something about it, but guess what? You're up there and they're not. And if it's somebody who served with you, then, you know, you have to pray for, pray for people like that because just like they, you're up there, you may have had a misstep. They may be up there one day and have a misstep as well. And if anything, you want your peers to be praying with you and praying for you, right? Versus having something negative to say. But one of the things... Um, that you do when dealing with that, it's almost as if when you get up, you um, don't focus on the people, right? Yes, you're up there, you have a responsibility, whether you're on a call on a prayer line or whether you're in a pulpit in a worship service experience or a midweek experience or whatever the experience might be, um, your focus is not on the people. You're getting up there with your mind on your responsibility um, and doing what you're there to do, right? So you're not performing. It's not a performance, so it's not like you're trying to get win the approval of man, right? Long as God is pleased, that's the only thing that really matters, right? So here, here are the takeaways for uh, for this particular question, and then for those of you who are seasoned elders, if you have anything that you want to um, add to this, please feel free to drop it down here in the comments, right? For anyone who may deal with the issue of being nervous when they're asked to speak. But here's the key. First and foremost, you have to know what it is you've been asked to do. So whatever it is you've been asked to do, whether you're doing a call to worship, whether you're doing the devotional scripture, the devotional prayer, um, whether you're coming up behind the uh, music ministry and have to do an exhortation before you go into welcoming your special guests or visitors, um, whether you're doing highlights or uh, pastoral announcements, church announcements, uh, the uh, the uh, invitation to discipleship, raising the offering, uh, flowing with the altar prayer, whatever the case might be, you have to know what it is you're doing. And that's why it's so important as an elder under study, a new elder or a seasoned elder, if your ministry requires you to attend meetings with the elders, you need to show up at those meetings. And that ministry that you're serving with, they actually should have a manual prepared for the elders with all of that information lined out, as well as giving you an opportunity in those settings to practice, to perfect your gift, and to get real-time feedback in that moment. So that as you're among your peers and not necessarily in front of the congregation, you have the opportunity to perform any of those responsibilities so that you can when you go up on a Sunday, it won't necessarily be your first time because you've done it before in another setting. So it's important that you know what it is that you're doing, but what's also very important is preparation, right? You have to prepare. It grieves my spirit when people show up on a, for any event and they've been given an assignment and they come there and they're not prepared. This is God's house. This is God's church. This is a worship experience. And you have a responsibility that you must take seriously, seriously enough that you're going to prepare, not the morning of, okay? Not the morning of, unless you're getting up four day in the morning, right? And going into worship, going into prayer, preparing whatever it is that your responsibility is for that day, right and then getting there early enough to get settled go into consecration if your ministry has consecration which they should uh, even though you should come there consecrated right your consecration starts at home not at the at church so with that being said knowing what you're doing being prepared um and you know preparation also includes practice right let me say this um, and I don't want to say too much because, of course, I want you guys to take the course. The book is just a, a concise overview. Here I'll be discussing some things, um, just kind of touching bases with it. But in the course, there's so much more. Um, but I do want to tell you this. When you're preparing your practice, one of the things that um, I was taught years ago by um, uh, 
Pastor Antoine Barrier, he was my big brother at Greater St. Stephen. He said, whenever we had to go forward in the pulpit, especially if we was doing our trial sermon or, you know, whatever the case might be, get in the mirror and practice what you're going to say. Get in the mirror. I say this, and I say this even on, on, in the course, if professional athletes have to practice, and they just dribbling a ball, I don't want to say just dribbling a ball, because they get paid very well dribbling a ball. But as um, an elder in the Lord's church, you should take your responsibilities serious enough that you're going to prepare. And sometimes preparation includes practice, right? Because what you don't want to do is practice in the pulpit. That's not the place to practice. When you get to church, you should already be prayed up. You should already be prepared. You should already have whatever it is that you're going to do. Whether it's on your iPhone, your iPad, you have something that you can refer to because that's a part of the preparation process, right? So we're talking about being nervous. I see some of you guys have come on in. Thank you for coming in. And for those who are catching the replay, go back and catch it from the beginning. I shared so much. I'm not going to be long. I just wanted to answer and deal with this particular question because I thought it was a good one to kick off with tonight. But the other thing that's going to be very key as it relates to how to handle your nerves when you're called on to do something. I already said, first of all, you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You have to know what you're doing. You have to prepare. You have to practice, right? You have to, um, when you look at those things and you think about um, knowing what you have to do, preparing and practice, that's what gives you the confidence to get up and flow and do what you're supposed to do. As an elder, you can be called up on at the spur of the moment. And you can't be afraid because you are an elder in the Lord's church, right? You're not a minister in training, right? Um, you are an elder or you're understudied to be an elder, which means that you have show forth evidence that you're prepared for that level of responsibility, right? So you have to make sure that you are relying on the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost, who is the teacher of all things. The Holy Ghost, who gives you, he empowers you. The Holy Ghost, which is the anointing of God, who is going to prepare you to do and say whatever it is you're going to, you're going to say and do in front of the people, whether you're in the pulpit on the Sunday or on a prayer call or on a virtual setting, whatever the case might be, you need to allow the Holy Ghost to rise up big on the inside of you because it's not about you. If you get up there in yourself, guess what? Sometimes things that happen to kind of humble you, to show you that it's not about you. It's all about God and about God getting the glory out of you in that moment where he's trying to use you for his glory, right? When you think about it's not about me, is all about him. Amen. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight. And one of the scriptures you can stand on, no matter what the occasion is, I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So thank you guys. I am not going to stay on any much longer. I just wanted to hop on right quick this pop-up Q&A. I thought it was an awesome question. I think all of us have been there. Um, in one capacity or another because all of us have a first time at doing something and if you're getting up and you're not nervous then you need to check yourself because that means you're relying on you and not relying on the holy ghost but there's a way that you can manage your nerves there is a way that you can be calm and yet go out with fire and power and authority and the anointing because of who lives on the inside of you right god has empowered you to do what he has called you to do right and walk in that boat and is knowing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Be blessed on tonight. Love you guys. So I'll see you guys the next time. Um, be sure um, to drop some questions here in the group or um, send me a message if you want it anonymously, even though you can post in here anonymous as well. I, I, I added that feature so that, you know, people may not want other people to know what questions they have. And that's cool, too. The whole point is to answer any questions you might have about the content in the book or the content in the courses. And again, I want to encourage you. Thank you for purchasing a book. But go through those courses. If you can only do one, do one that you think is most applicable to you. Um, and I promise you, is you're going to be blessed once you get into those courses. 
promises. Amen. And then we're going to come here and we're going to look how they say chop it up right here so that we can all kind of grow together. Amen. Love you guys. Y'all have a blessed evening and I'll see you the next time.